the slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna Hey team, so another great question I was recently asked, and that is how to reduce muscle f fatigue during exercise. And obviously it's very, very important to, to minimize the amount of fatigue you're feeling when you're running. Uh, when we're running at faster paces, as, as you all know, there's more oxygen demand on the body, there's more stress, there's more inflammation that's being built up as we run. Um, so one of the most important things I want you all to keep in mind as, as you're getting fitter, just to be patient in this process because again when world-renowned exercise physiologist dr joe b hill says it takes about three to four weeks for the body to adapt to any stress load being placed on it he's saying it for a reason and a lot of times we get disgruntled we get frustrated when our performances isn't at the level that we want and so time and patience are definitely our friends um, but in terms of muscle fatigue I mean there's a lot of things you can do especially after workouts um, or even prior to workouts that can help you minimize the likelihood of experiencing higher amounts of fatigue but also lowering the the likelihood that you'll get injured as well I always talk about warming the muscles prior to starting the workouts and then icing after you're done minimizing the amount of muscle fatigue you're feeling in training is difficult to to do because as we have to stress the energy systems of the body in order to adapt to a higher level so if all you're doing if the majority of your running is at an aerobic um, ability if you're if you're running aerobically probably like 90 percent of your your weekly volume and 10 percent is anaerobic of course you're definitely going to be in great shape but you're gonna you have to look at what what the world's top runners do Okay, you know, even Dr. Joe Vigil says the top world-class runners of the world run around 40% of their weekly volume at or faster than anaerobic threshold effort. And he says Americans run around 8 to 10% of their weekly volume at anaerobic threshold effort. So, of course, these runners do have an advantage on the athletes that just simply aren't training fast enough often enough in the race so you for you to minimize fatigue you have to make sure that you're looking at how you're setting up your training is too much of your training at an aerobic um an aerobic effort because if that's the case you're just going to be a very strong long slow distance runner okay of course there's nothing wrong with that i mean building fitness burning fat uh, getting stronger by being consistent with your mileage is very important and there are some runners out there that can do phenomenal just by running volume just volume alone and not really doing a lot of speed work not really stressing um, running at very hard anaerobic efforts but there's other athletes and I'm an example of that I, I, that need speed sessions in order to minimize the amount of fatigue that we're feeling in training over a long period of time okay when well, if you're training for a 10 mile or half marathon marathon 20 to 24 week buildup is key okay if you're trying to really get it right doing a, a four to eight week buildup for a 10 mile or half marathon marathon is simply not enough time really to get it right again three to four weeks for the body to adapt so in order to reduce muscle fatigue during exercise you have to stress the systems relax recover stress recover okay there there's a um, a training principle called super compensation where the body is actually about two to three times weaker immediately following a very hard anaerobic workout but it's about 48 hours after that workout's done your body immediately jumps in performance level it, it's it, it bounces and it, it goes you're about two to three times stronger about 48 hours after the workout is done so that super compensation effect when you're running is very very important in order to you know the, the recovery cycle all the benefits of your hard training happen during the rest period so it's not during the really hard training that we're doing that we really learn to minimize um, higher amounts of lactic acid it's after it's during the recovery cycle and then when you continue to do that over a long period of time 16 weeks minimum 20 to 24 weeks even if you're like a 5k 10k athlete a four month block of training is is better for you than say four weeks because again you're not rushing your fitness 
So doing other types of workouts like hill repetitions, you know, finding a hill that's like 150 meters to 200 meters long and gradually increasing your intensity up the hill and either walking when you're when you're not in great shape or when you're very early in a buildup, walking down the hill, and then as you get fitter, you ex gradually accelerate even faster up the hill and then jogging on the way down. So that's very important. Running over hillier terrain is is like weight training as well. Okay, you don't necessarily even have to lift do strength training. Just run over hills very often. I mean, even Dr. V Hill says that. Um, my collegiate coach, Jack Hazen, was always very adamant about us running over hills. Um, v Hill, I mean, and, and V Hill and Coach Hazen are very close friends. And a lot of our training revolved around the same type of training concepts uh, that Dr. Joe V Hill had his runners at Adams State College, Adams State University now um, doing. We would run uh, a hillier type run every single weekend. Uh, we would do hill repetitions just about every week or every other week, and I kind of do that w with the athletes that I that I work with one on one as well. And doing focusing on hills, focusing on, on lifting your knees, pumping your arms more, really, uh, and that forces different muscle groups to be used as opposed to just running on flat surfaces the the entire way. So I, I think. These types of workouts, doing a VO2 max workout once per week, doing a, a longer long run, not just a faster varied pace long run that I talk about doing every other week, but also running very long periods of time at very slow efforts where you're running two to three hours and just burning fat and getting building that endurance. That over time will help you to reduce muscle fatigue during exercise. Okay, it's not an easy process at all. Okay, you have to be patient. You have to enjoy what you're doing. You have to find your why and be excited for what you're doing out there. Because if you don't, it's going to become very monotonous. It's, it's going to be more of a challenge for you. Surround yourself with the right people, that the athletes out there that are going to challenge you, get you out of your comfort zone. Athletes that are far better than you on the track and on the roads. It's okay to be humble. Okay, there's always going to be someone faster than you. You know, I always. Uh, welcomed the opportunity to train with guys like Dan Brown. You know, Dan was uh, a member, was a former member of the world class, U.S. Army world class athlete program like I was, but he was there for many years because he was so good. He was a two-time Olympian, ran the marathon in 211.35, um, ran very low 28 minutes for 10,000 meters, broke four minutes for the mile when he was at West Point. Um, clearly a much better runner than I was, okay? And so my time being able to do repeat thousands with him on Fort Carson when I was at my peak, you know, I remember doing a, a workout with him. Uh, it was eight one Ks and we were at 6,000 feet and we were hitting anywhere from 249 to 251 per K and we were uh, alternating laps. I would lead a lap, he would lead a lap. And then, so I did the eight one Ks with him and then he did two more 1600 meters between 436 and 438 after I was done with those Ks with him, okay? So those types of very strong workouts were what helped me in my own training to reduce muscle fatigue during exercise because again, you're running at much, much faster efforts than your planned goal race pace. Um, and then also paying attention to jogging on easy days so that again, you can continue to run fast over a long period of time. You have to pay attention to your recovery. Okay, or you're not going to jump levels. You're not going to get to the next level in your training on the track or on the roads. Uh, I think the recovery period and, and is even more important at times than the physical training. Also, mental rehearsal, seeing yourself, visualizing yourself, doing something before it actually occurs. You know, you're training your mind like you're training your body. We can't just focus all of our attention on physical training and minimize the mental rehearsal, mental re uh, preparation that goes into running very fast. Okay, all these little things, your nutrition, okay, paying attention if you're feeling fatigued and you're it feels like it's chronic, get a blood test. Ask the physician assistant, nurse or or doctor, ask them to test your ferritin levels. Okay, if you're running low on ferritin, it means that your oxygen carrying capacity of your cells is not at optimal levels, okay? Uh, anything below 30 nanograms per Dr. Joe V Hill is you should not be racing, you should not be racing any races at below 30. Okay, back in 2007 when I was tested, I had a, a, a score of 21 nanograms, okay? 
I was not performing very well um, I, I, in workouts and in races. I remember running the 20, uh, 2007 Grandma's Marathon. I ran it in 2.40.02, went out in 111 through, or 110 through the first half marathon, was at 2.28 marathon pace through 20 miles, hit, hit in 153, but I just fell apart in the last 10 kilometers um, and ran 2.40.02. So after that race, I, I got my blood tested and found out I was borderline anemic, okay? When you, and when I got my levels back up to 80, 85 to 89, which was, I think 87 was where I scored. When I got it, I was, got my levels back up. I started hitting new personal best. Dr. V. Hill says the way to do this is to uh, take one teaspoon of ferrosol with some orange juice once a day, along with some of one vitamin C tablet of 250 milligrams um, in order to and do that daily over about a month to a month and a half to get your ferritin levels back to normal. Again, find out what your ferritin levels are at first. Okay, but again, this is just things if you're feeling fatigued over a long period of time, you could be running low on, on a nutrient or you could be running low on ferritin. So keep those things in mind. So I hope this video on how to reduce muscle fatigue during exercise is helpful for all of you. Feel free to leave me a comment below in the comment section. Definitely check out the resources below these videos as well as on RunDreamAchieve.com. I've created running courses, training plans. Uh, if you want to jump on a call, one-on-one -on -one call with me, uh, there's that option as well, as well as month, monthly coaching. So wish you guys and gals all the very best in your training, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.